Hey, it's Mike. Let's talk about Reaper. Hey, it's Future Mike. After reviewing the footage for this video, I realized that the audio was not that great. I was experimenting with using an overhead small diaphragm condenser mic to try to keep the microphone out of the camera frame. But unfortunately, I should have tested a little bit more because it didn't work out as well as I had expected. I wanted to apologize for the quality of the audio in this video, but I also didn't want to scrap the video because I believe there's some useful information in here. I trust that you'll press on and glean what you can from the video, and I'll definitely do better next time. Let's get back to the video. Any of you who've been following me for any length of time know that I'm not a fan of sample replacement when it comes to drums. My preference is to do my very best to get it right at the source. Unfortunately, sometimes it can prove very challenging to get things right at the source. Recently, I tracked drums for a band called Kinda Mad. Check the links in the description to follow them on social media. The kit that we tracked had a non-ported resonant head on the kick drum. Admittedly, I have very little experience with tracking a non-ported kick drum. We did add a secondary mic to try to capture a bit more click and attack from the batter side of the kick drum, but the end result wasn't as great as I hoped it would be. I realized that you can use saturation to add harmonics and also additive EQs to try to boost the click and the attack of the kick drum, but it's difficult to enhance something that's hardly there. This is typically the point where a producer might reach for Slate Digital's Trigger or Superior Drummer 3 to sample replace or augment the original performance. But what if Reaper had the tools built in to augment the original performance with samples made from my own kick drum? Attack Drumheads recently sent me an assortment of skins to try out on my kit. I was particularly impressed with the Attack Orbit heads on my kick drum on both the resonant and the batter side. The resonant side comes with a 4 inch port pre-installed, and both the batter and the resonant side are a 2 ply 10 mil film with certain portions of the top layer removed. Aside from the 4 inch port, what looks like holes on both sides are actually where the second layer is partially removed. This unique design gives what I would consider the perfect balance of low end and punchiness. With that said, let's take a look at Reaper and see how I can create a sample for my own kick and use it in other projects. The project I've currently got open is work in progress of Headset by Kinda Mad. We've still got a bit of tracking to be done before we can begin a proper mix on this. What I've currently got is a basic rough static mix consisting mostly of just volume balance and panning. You'll notice I've got a couple of channel strips in key places primarily just to provide glue and a small amount of compression. Let's take a listen. It's not sounding bad, but that kick seems to leave a little bit lacking in my opinion. Let's take a listen to the drums in solo and pay particular attention to the kick. Once again, the kick drum that was recorded was non-ported. We recorded it using an Audix D6 mic that sat outside of the kick drum, and since it was outside of the kick drum, it picked up an awful lot of the room noise. We did utilize a second mic to try to pick up a bit more click from the batter side, but once again, being outside of the kick drum, it picked up a lot of the room. Let's take a listen. I'll solo the kicks bus. And that's just got an awful lot of bottom end and not much of the presence of the click that I'd like to have. I've got another project open in a second tab. This was from when I recorded myself doing a one take improv playthrough of a drumless backing track from Nick DePiro. If you've not seen that video, click the link above. That video also contains a link where you can download the tracks to use my drums in your own projects. Now this is far from mixed, but let's take a quick listen and pay particular attention to the definition of the kick, even with no plugins on the drums. Currently the only plug-in on this project at all is Event Horizon. I'm using that just to bring the levels up a bit. As you could hopefully hear, that kick has a lot more punch and definition as opposed to what I got on the other track. 
Let's take a look and focus on the kick track. I'll isolate it. And let's listen again. What I'd like to do is isolate one of these kicks where I'm not doing doubles and use that to use in the other project. I'll scroll down the track a little bit and find a kick that's pretty well isolated. This looks to be a good selection here. What I'd like to do at this point is grab a copy of this kick using razor editing. This won't be a full-on tutorial for razor editing because if I'm honest I still don't fully understand it, but I have learned that I can use it to quickly cut away a section of a waveform. I'll hold Alt on my keyboard and right click and drag to create my razor edit. I'll grab a little bit more than I need and you can see that this section is now selected. Now I'll hold control and left click and drag to move this down to another track. Let's expand this track so we can see. And I'll need to unsolo my other kick and let's focus on this one here. I'll solo this track and I'll use my slip editing to make sure that this transient lines up with the beginning. I'll hold alt on the keyboard after disabling my snapping that is and left click and drag to slip edit that into place. Next I'll grab the left edge and drag this to shorten this a little bit to where we've only got the isolated kick. That lined up just a little bit better. And that should be sufficient. We'll shorten that just a little bit further. And now I need to get a copy of this kick by itself. That can be accomplished a few different ways. I can right click the item and choose glue items from the menu and that will create a waveform that contains only the isolated kick. Or alternately, I can click on File and Batch File Item Converter. We'll drag this over where we can see a little bit better. And I'll click on Add and choose Add Selected Media Items. That's got my kick in there. And here we can see the file name, which right now it's just going to use the name of the source. I'll just call this kick. We'll choose a directory. For the time being, I'll just place it on the desktop so I can easily find it. For sample rate, I'll leave that at source. I record at 48K and I'd like to keep it that way. And I'd like for my resulting file to continue to be a 24-bit wave, so I'll leave all this alone. Next, I'll click Convert All. And just like that, we're done. If I open up my file browser and take a look on my desktop, I should have my kick file. And there it is, kick.wave. We'll close this and go back into my other project. And let's take a look at our kicks track. We can do this a few different ways. I can add my sample to the kick track, or my preferred method, since I don't want to 100% replace this, I can create another track that's triggered by the kick track. So on the kick track, I'll go to my effects library and search for the word trigger. Reaper has a built-in plugin called JS Audio to MIDI Drum Trigger. We'll add this to the track, and essentially what this will do is listen to transients on the kick track and convert them to MIDI. This may take a bit of fine-tuning to get right, so let's take a listen to our kick track and see if we can get this to trigger the way that we'd like it to. Now right now we're not hearing anything, and that's because the original signal mix in the plugin is currently set to zero. I'll take this up to 100 because right now I want to hear all of the original signal. As you can hear, we're getting a lot of snare bleed in there, so we may want to use the D6 instead of the combined kicks track. So I'll move this over to the track that was recorded only using the D6. Let's solo that track and take a listen again. I'll need to get the right plugin version up there. And let's listen. And we can see at the top of the plugin we have an open threshold and a closed threshold. This will act as a gate that operates the trigger based on transients in the waveform. Let's take a listen again and watch the meter on the left side to see when the kick is actually hitting. Now it looks like our kicks are always above minus 18, so perhaps minus 18 will be a good starting point. And our closing point may be around minus 20. Now that we've got that set, we'll need another plugin. We'll go back to our plugins list, and we will look for Samplomatic and insert one instance of Resamplomatic 5000. And when we first open this up, there's no sounds loaded. I'd like to import the kick sample that we just made, and I can do that by either clicking Browse or by opening a file browser, either Windows Explorer or Finder if you're on Mac navigating to the file that you'd like, and dragging it into the interface. Here we can see we've got our kick, and if I click this little bar to the right of kick.wave, we should be able to hear it. If we take a look at the controls in Resample-O-Matic, we've got minimum volume in the overall output volume, 
We've got minimum and maximum velocities. We also have a note start and note end. The note start and note end dictates what MIDI note that the sampler listens to. It's currently set to listen to all notes in MIDI. And if we take a look back at our JS Audio to MIDI drum trigger, this is currently sending out on MIDI note 69. I don't know an awful lot about converting MIDI notes to MIDI numbers, but I can see over here in the note start and the note end that this is telling me what note the number coincides with. If I wanted to isolate this to this particular MIDI note, I can change my note start to 69 and also change my note end to 69. And we can see in resampleomatic that number 69 equals A4. Now let's turn our original signal mix down to zero and see if we can get our kick sample to trigger based on the output of JS Audio to MIDI. As you could hear, we're getting some double triggers in there, so we'll need to make some adjustments to try to fix this. Let's increase the retrigger interval and see if that cleans it up. There's a few other things that you can do to make some adjustments to avoid retriggering. By adjusting the open and close threshold, as well as the retrigger interval, you should be able to get this to line up pretty well with your original drum performance. It may take a little bit of trial and error, and you may also consider adding a gate in front of the audio to MIDI drum trigger to make sure that you're only getting what's needed. Now let's see if we can get a proper balance between the original signal and the sample. And let's take a listen in context. That most definitely adds a lot more punch to that kick. Let's take a listen before and after. Here's without the sample. And with. Now one thing I don't like about doing it this way is it seems that I've lost a lot of the low end that the original kick had. So let's take a look at doing this a different way. I'll create another track inside of my kicks bus. And I'll call this sample. Now let's take our audio to MIDI and move it over and the same thing with our kick sample, and then remove them from the original track. Next, I'll need to route my kick track into the sample track. I'll left click and drag from the route button onto the other track. And what I'd like to send is audio one and two to inputs one and two. I'll solo this track so we can focus, and let's take a listen. As you can hear, we still have some of the original track bleeding through, but that's because I copied the plugin. I'll take the plug in here and I will remove all of the original signal and let's take a listen again. Now I've got nothing but my sample on that track and I can control the blend with the faders. Let's take this out of solo and see if we can find a perfect blend. definitely tell a difference with the additional kick added in there. And of course at this point I can continue to process that kick as I normally would. I can add EQ, compression, or whatever and just treat it as traditional audio because that's precisely what it is. So even though I'm not the biggest fan of sample replacement, I find it fascinating that Reaper has the tools built in to allow me to sample my own kick drum and use it in other projects. If you'd like to know a bit more about drum editing, be sure to check out my drum editing and Reaper course on Promix Academy. Shout out to Naval Pliff, the, the, I have no clue how to say your name, from Discord for the shirt and the stickers. If you'd like to get your own shirt featuring famous, unlicensed audio hardware, check the link in the description. I hope this helps. If you like the content you're seeing, be sure to like, share, and subscribe. And you can support the channel further by clicking the Buy Me a Coffee. I like coffee, but I ain't gonna lie, it's hot today. 
Patreon link, or the Super Thanks button below. Visit us on Discord and engage with other Reaper users. We'll see you next time. See, this is normally the part where I add like a Marvel Cinematic Universe type of outtake, but I'm just not feeling that hilarious today. You could always go back and watch the older ones.